Sometimes I wonder where I'd be without you. Would I understand life? Would I make right choices? Would I live out my faith? Thank you for showing me what it means to love God and for giving me your all, even when it was difficult. Thank you for the discipline I deserved and the grace I didn't, and for being present, even though you had so much on your plate. Thank you for picking me up and encouraging me to try again, and for the little life lessons I still lean on today. The truth is, I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for you. As I look back on my life, I see moment after moment where your influence, your wisdom, and your strength made all the difference. Thank you for loving me. Today, I give thanks. Today, I am grateful. Today, I celebrate you. I love you, Dad. Good morning. Welcome to the online worship service with the First United Methodist Church of West Chicago for Sunday, June 20th. Today is Father's Day, 
a day of celebrating silly stereotypes of grilling prowess, handyman tasks, and the full spectrum of the sporting world, all with a healthy dose of dad humor. This year, it has been a particularly hard holiday for me to face without my own father for the first time. My dad meant so much to me. He shaped who I am in countless quiet ways. And most of all, he was my safe place. While I desperately wish my boys still had their grandpa, I cling to the memories that we did get to make with him. I know for some of you, it's been many a Father's Day without your dad, be it from death or distance. While we pause today for recognizing this foundational role in our lives, let's also reflect on how the men who fill this role are a gift of God, embodying God's care and concern for us. On that note, today's altar flowers at in-person worship have been placed by Linda Smith in honor of Father's Day. Please note an upcoming change in service time. Starting on Sunday, July 4th, worship will begin at 10 a.m. instead of 9.30 a.m. Linda Smith is coordinating a vacation Bible school to be held July 26th through 30th. Volunteers are needed to help provide the program Courageous Faith. For more information, check out the event listing on our Facebook page or contact Linda Smith. Please join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, when we are inclined to worry or panic, speak with authority to us. Speak directly through Jesus so that fears may be confronted and our faith reinstated. Through him and in him, let us spend our days and nights with the courage and peace of those who know they are being saved and sustained by an imperturbable grace and to be the glory and praise. Amen. Please join me for our call to worship. The winds of life's terror and wave storms of my reality are about to drown me. Peace be still. Splashes of disappointment, pain, fear, and guilt have entered our boat, and I thought you were present. It doesn't feel like it. Peace be still. Your rest contradicts my restlessness, and I am shaken up. How are you in this boat with me, and yet I can't feel you? Peace be still. You calm the winds and the waves in the moments of our despair. Peace be still. I doubted you, but instead of condemning me, you proved yourself to me. 
Our doubts are beneath you. Our fears are not above you. Next page. Our storms may all surround you, and still they answer to your word. Teach us how to be peace. Teach us how to be. Teach us how to be still. Peace be still. Now join me for a Father's Day prayer litany. For fathers everywhere who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers that mourn. For men, though without children of their own, acted like fathers and have nurtured and cared for us. Holy God, hear this prayer for our father figures. For stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family. Holy God, hear this prayer for stepfathers. For adoptive fathers who have claimed the orphan and loved the ones unwanted as their precious gift from God. Holy God, hear this prayer for adoptive fathers. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to the needs of their children and have not sustained their families, holy God, have mercy on absentee fathers. For fathers who struggle with temptation, violence, or addiction, for those who do harm and for those whom they have harmed, holy God, have mercy on fathers that struggle. For new fathers full of hope, for longtime fathers full of wisdom, for the fathers yet to be and the fathers soon to be. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of your church. For those that have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship, for those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of our faith. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is time for us to come together and pray about our storms in our lives. Remember, you can share your prayer request by sending us an email to vigoumcucc at gmail.com or you can call the office and let us know so that we may put them into our prayer chain and if you want me to pray personally I will call you so please do uh, call us with your prayer request and so let us lift all our prayers and be uh, and come to God with our storms but it is also our joys when we overcome our storms so let us pray. Lord, we come to your presence again and again because we do know that you are a God who listens to us. Lord, with the chippering of these birds, with all these sounds and this, this wonderful breaking of this ground, seeing all these flowers and the aroma of the flowers, walking down to the park without the mask, yes, Lord, you have seen us. You have cared for us, yes, Lord. You have showed us your glory through this nature and through this this walk that we walk with you even though in the times when we feel you are not there there are times when we see that you are not around us lord yes you are in us in our boat of sorrow in our boat of difficulties and lord we lift each and ever every single prayers of our hearts and in our minds lord we ask that all the prayers that has been lifted up in our prayers those people who are watching and those which we have in our minds and in our hearts lord we lift them up prayers for healing prayers for complete recovery prayers for your presence prayers for your comfort prayers for your uh, triumphant presence so that they may aware of your yourself in their lives lord and Lord, we pray for each and every person who are worshiping together here through these screens. Lord, bless their homes, bless their 
workplace bless their families and lord we pray that during this summer time as they re re renew themselves as they find new ways to praise you lord give them the ways that they may find resources to see you lord and make us one together lord yes we walk in the storm yes last year and this coming year is also with covid storms and many other storms that comes in our lives but yes lord you are with with us we have seen that through the vaccines that we have seen that and so lord we are thankful for that and so with the thanksgiving we ask that you be with us command us with your hand and make us still make us known your presence wherever we go and take us from this worship to the mission field to work for your kingdom to make it known that yes lord you are a god who is worthy to praise who is worthy to give thanks and so lord we want to give thanks through our witnesses that we have witness in jesus christ and so lord we ask that take us from here after the worship to share these words to the people who are walking in darkness who are walking in sorrow who do not see you who do not see your care and lord let it be that we become an instrument of your saving grace to others we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them to the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was to in the stern, asleep as on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with a great awe and said to one another, who then is this 
that even the wind and the sea obey him. The second scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as known and yet as well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Happy Father's Day to you all. I know it's been a difficult Father's Day for many. We have lost many father figures this year because of COVID. But we have seen how God keeps us alive in this storm. On that day, what an auspicious uh, yeah, beginning. Um, just a day, a day of teaching and healing, a day like many other days in the life of those who say yes to Jesus. But this was a particularly exhausting day a tiring day Jesus wanted to get away to elaborate the farewells no ritual goodbyes he turns to his disciples and says let's blow this pop stand and off they go they get into their boat and they set off across the sea or rather the lake it's not that big, really. It's not like an ocean crossing. But the geography surrounding this lake makes it susceptible to pop up storms. Out of nowhere, with nothing on the horizon, then bam, there it is. You're in the midst of storm. That's the nature of storms. They just happen. I have experienced that. Sometimes we can look back and see them coming, but most of the time they just come. It is almost as if someone, something can, was out to get us. There is a feeling about the storm in the story that it isn't just a storm or a natural occurrence, a common happenstance. There is something bigger here, something malevolent here when jesus <clears throat> tells the storm to calm down beast and shouts peace be still these are the same words mark tells us jesus used to cast out demons there is a translated as be still come out of her same words this storm Mark implies in dynamic evil needing the hand of a savior. We have been visited by evil in our world. 
you name it in your place or see it in the wider world our nation at the heart of the things the storms of evil is all too evident that evil exists is beyond debate it's not always easy to name it to identify it in a messy world a world broken by the scene and fear but sometimes it is a responsibility of those who claim the name of christ to identify the evil whether it is in the culture in the country or foreign to us as to almost incomprehensible or one that is all too familiar and even claiming to be the true face of patriotism like christ we sometimes need to stand in the name and in the face of this dynamic and tell it to be quiet and get out but we are getting ahead of ourselves the story isn't really about the storm the storm demands our attention isn't it it seems to be the major character the biggest threat the loudest voice is the storm but this isn't a story about the storm it's a story about jesus it has been about jesus it's a story about the faith is easy to miss we are distracted when we are afraid we lose hope and often one of the first things to go is faith belief in living god and loving god and hope in few, uh, tomorrow and today when disciples see the danger they ask jesus do you care isn't that the question that is somewhere somewhere deep in your soul in your times of greatest distress isn't that the question that we want to answer by god even if we don't have the courage to ask isn't that the question i ask that question too we know that god is real the god is powerful and creative but does he care does he care what we are going through people sometimes make a big mistake we make make a mistake i make a mistake out of atheism sometimes in the times when the storms are there does god exist in my experience that's really the main question people have about god the main question is that of the disciples do you care do you do god care and Jesus rises from his serene sleep on the cushion interesting contrast between the placid sleep of Jesus and the wild terror of his disciples rebukes the storm just like he earlier rebuked the dynamic forces that tortured some people and the wind and the wave seas leading the awestruck disciples to ask who is this who is this Jesus jumps down the throats of this disciples and said, "Have you still no faith? Still?" Just a paragraph before this passage, Mark tells us that Jesus always spoke in parables. Remember we talked about that in last week, in riddles and in stories he talked. And people often wonder of confused and uncertain, it was almost as if Jesus didn't want to spoon feed people he wanted them to meet him halfway take a risk and say i believe even when i don't fully understand i believe even as i doubt jesus was okay with doubts doubters get a pass from jesus but those who were afraid got a reprimand anyone and anyway the paragraph before the storm starts says that Jesus always spoke in parables except when he spoke to his disciples remember this was our last week scripture when we talked about the mustard seeds and Jesus spoke in parables but to them the disciples he explained everything everything he told them who he was he told them what he was about he told them what it meant everything have you still no faith what else can i do says jesus what else can i give you what other 
clean cheat sheets what are the cliff notes for heaven's sake you didn't get it yet at the end of the story they are in awe and um what is this they said even the winds and the waves obey him who is this they have never seen anything like this before jesus has never stilled a storm before he had never stopped a wind gust never smoothed out a wave it's no wonder that it never occurred to them to ask jesus to do such a thing they had no idea that this was his toolbox and frankly if they had gently awakened jesus and said mm, you know what there is a pretty wild out there anything you can do we take all the help he probably would have smiled and then given them that watch this look and brought them to safety the problem is they don't ask him to do anything did you notice that in our scripture they don't say in mark's version of story anyway it just say we need help here no what they say is indefinitely more offensive to jesus it is evidence that they have been dozing through the disciple classes their minds wandering as jesus patiently walked them through his history and his mission worse than that they missed the class motto the mission statement the center of everything they forgot the most famous verse in all of our gospels and sometimes we do when our storms comes and that is for god so loved the world so loved don't you care they shouted that in their fear they lost the grip on the main truth about christ don't you care you might as well shout at the birds in the air don't you fly or shout the rain drops and say don't you fall or shake their feet at the uh, at the at the sun and ask don't you shine don't you care of course he cares he loved he cares so much that he gave his only son that's why he's there sleeping on the cushion because he's exhausted from caring for everyone and everywhere of course he cares he yes jesus cares but not always in the way we expected and wanted him to care he cares by calling us sometimes calling us to venture forth into the storm they thought that jesus was the solution to all their problems only to find that jesus cast them into the middle of the problems they would never have had if they had not signed on with jesus it's also with us when we sign on with jesus we see all kinds of problem because we ask through that problems god see us and they thought that they know all of the about god until jesus began hurling at them his stories and that raised more questions than answers who is this but in their panic in their fear they forgot we forget they lost their grip on him and thought only of their own lives the boat was already swamped and they gave up on life on hope on him they gave up and have you still no faith it's easy to forget in the midst of the storms forget to hold on to him not because he will still uh, every storm but he will stay with you in the storm uh bold in the crashing waves and he cares and that is everything in the midst of the storm you know paul also is disappointed well maybe not but he talks to them like children they aren't uh leaning into the wind he says they aren't risking loving like they should like they could in our scripture today He doesn't want to wait doesn't want them to wait now is the time he says now right now yes the winds are blowing yes so much in is uncertainty yes there are threats but now is the time to claim the faith 
Then, as if to make it even harder to claim faith, he tells them his own story. Paul tells them his story. He, he tells them what he has endured, hinting as he uh, does, that their lives aren't going to get any easier. Easier. In fact, he hints that it is possible that making their choice might bring a whole lot of trouble falling down on their heads. And yet it is worth the choice. Worth the choice to walk with Christ. It is worth the storm that comes. Paul would argue that it is the only way to survive the storm that comes by claiming the relationship, by claiming this family in Jesus Christ. Remember, the you to whom he speaks in the opening verses in, uh, in our Corinthian uh, scripture and throughout this text is plural. We choose together, or rather we as individuals choose to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We become a part of a family. We become a part of the community. We choose this day, which means that we have support that we have resources when we face the storms that comes in our lives. And we offer resources when someone else is struggling to find their feet in the winds that blow. That's how we survive the storm together. You see, there is a difference between the trust and the faith. We learned that last week too. But I'm going to reemphasize it again. Trust is to earn as opposed to faith, which is simply to do. It's an action word. We trust when we know. I have experience of something or somebody or someone who have done something and we say, yes, we trust this company, people or thing. Because we experience them using it or knowing them. That's how our Amazon reviews work. We buy Amazons because we see reviews and we trust through that reviews. But faith, on the other hand, is not earned. It's just there. Faith is something that we cultivate, that we need to nurture. And we need to keep even when things go bad or good. When storms come, trust may crumble, but faith is what we need. When Jesus sees the terror of his disciples, he marvels that they don't have enough faith. What is faith? Maybe in the light of the story, faith is a determination to stick with Jesus, to be together, to be following him. Even when he leads you into a storm, even when you are fearful, I want you to take the story of Jesus and his disciples on the sea in the so storm as a parable of what it's something sometimes like to have faith in Jesus. Faith is when we do it together like Paul said in our scriptures today. It is now an acceptable time. Now is when God has shown us his care and love. And now is the time to come together and see the faith because we know the whole thing. Jesus did not at that time. We know what Jesus did. So we do not walk by sight, but by faith together without fear. Even when storms are high, we know he is in it. So go in peace of this storm that you are going through. I do not know which storm you are going, but I do know one thing that God is going to be there. God is constantly aware of your storm and he's there. He's not sleeping. May that be your day today. Amen. Our church is sustained through this wilderness time by your faithful generosity.
you can continue to send your offerings by mail, or for more information about setting up an electronic funds transfer, contact Roberta Kent or Pastor Abney. Please join me in the offering prayer. As we offer our gifts to you this day, they are given with hope that we will be better able to let go of what the world tells us will guarantee our security and our hope and assurance in your redeeming love. Dedicate these gifts in the knowledge that there are other boats besides ours in the same storm. We pray this prayer in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. joining today we thank Christ our Lord for delivering us from the storms of our life I hope that you have find ways to see Christ and accept him and be together in relationship with each other so that we may take this storm away from our lives so with Christ's help we go out into this world sharing our faith with our communities around us and so now with the power of the living God, go into the world, shining God's light into the darkness. Go transform the world. In the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.